Greetings, dear viewers. Today, I invite you to delve into a remarkable journey, a recounting of my extraordinary encounter with the ethereal realm. Picture this, a brush with the transcendental, perhaps teetering on the brink of the afterlife, intertwined with the enigmatic presence of nitrous oxide that jovially dubbed laughing gas during a routine dental procedure. It was a chapter of my life unfolded at the tender age of 16, a time when innocence still held sway and the world seemed draped in a shroud of mysteries waiting to be unraveled. The stage was set in the quaint environs of a local dentist's office, a recommendation bestowed upon my parents by the esteemed guardians of my teenage heart, the parents of my then Bio. With implicit trust in their judgment, my parents believed they had stumbled upon a dental virtuoso, one whose skill with a drill was matched only by his reputation for excellence. I recall the time I found myself reclined in a dentist's chair, nestled within the confines of a cozy yet remarkably memorable room. The space was compact, with a window casting light to the left and a door adjacent to my feet. As I lay there, a wall adorned with nondescript pictures stood before me, offering little to captivate my attention beyond its dental clinic essence. The door remained ajar, permitting the influx of familiar dental office sounds, conversations, melodies wafting from unseen speakers, and the persistent trill of the telephone. The dentist, a stout figure, leaned against my right arm, his weight causing a slight discomfort as he prepared to administer treatment. Nitrous oxide, a novel experience for me, was his customary prelude to the administration of Novocaine, aimed at easing patient apprehension before the dreaded needle made its appearance. Despite my frequent visits to the dentist, this occasion required the insertion of a filling, necessitating the numbing of my jaw. Unfazed by dental procedures, I could almost drift into slumber amidst the clinical ambience. The dentist initiated a conversation about the gas, seeking my consent, and without hesitation, I consented, drawn by the intriguing tales of its effects relayed by my boyfriend. As the mask enveloped my face, I inhaled the gas, ushering in a peculiar sensation that defies simple description. In an instant, I found myself suspended above the dental chair, distanced from temporal constraints. Amidst this surreal detachment, my gaze honed in on the dental scene below, resembling a silent film devoid of auditory cues. Initially indifferent, a compelling presence implored me to intervene. Yielding reluctantly, I obeyed their silent directive, lifting the mask from the patient's face. Yet, as I did so, an unsettling realization dawned. I was an observer in an unfamiliar tableau. A compulsion to aid the patient gripped me, but the proximity of an unseen entity dissuaded physical intervention. Instead, I was urged to focus solely on the unfolding scene, a task I pursued with detached compliance. Time, if one could measure it in such a state, continued its unyielding march forward. The unseen presence persisted, urging me with mounting insistence to maintain my focus and effect change. Despite the temptation to explore the enigmatic surroundings, my attention remained tethered to the task at hand, guided by an unseen force. Attempts to divert my gaze were swiftly thwarted, imbuing me with a sense of eerie constraint amidst this ethereal encounter. Amidst the surreal detachment of my consciousness, it felt as though an unseen hand guided my gaze back to the scene unfolding below. Strangely, I sensed a dissociation from my physical form, as if my presence lacked a corporeal head to turn away from the spectacle before me. Despite my instinctual resistance, my eyes remained fixated on the girl and the mask, seemingly under the sway of an external force. Eventually, yielding to the persistent urging of the unseen entity, I focused my attention on the pivotal task of removing the mask from the girl's face. In an instant, my perspective shifted, and I found myself ensconced within the girl's body, grappling with the unfamiliar sensation of guiding her movements. Though I lacked tactile sensation, a sense of urgency propelled me to assist her, driven by a blend of reluctance and compulsion. It was akin to navigating the tempestuous waters of teenage rebellion, asserting independence amidst the constraints of external influence. Inside the girl's body, I struggled to manipulate her limbs, driven by an urgency that transcended the bounds of physical sensation. Abruptly, my consciousness returned to my own body, accompanied by a sluggish sense of reconnection. As I focused on aiding the girl, my perspective seamlessly merged with hers, enabling me to guide her arm in removing the mask.
The transition back to my physical self was marked by a disorienting disconnect, as if my spirit had to recalibrate to its corporeal vessel. As I grappled with the residual effects of the gas, the dentist attempted to resume the procedure, seemingly oblivious to the extraordinary events that had transpired. Despite feeling dazed and lethargic, a newfound resolve surged within me, culminating in the decisive act of refusing the mask. In that pivotal moment, I confronted the dentist with a steely gaze, asserting my autonomy in a manner that belied my teenage years. Though unaccustomed to such assertiveness, the dentist appeared unperturbed, and the dental visit continued without incident, shrouded in an aura of eerie normalcy. The once familiar sounds of the dental office faded into a hushed silence as I locked eyes with the dentist, a silent exchange laden with unspoken authority. Despite the lingering sense of strangeness that permeated the air, I remained resolute in my refusal, empowered by a newfound strength that defied rational explanation. And as the appointment drew to a close, I departed the dental office with a sense of quiet determination, leaving behind a lingering sense of intrigue and uncertainty in the wake of this inexplicable encounter. As I reflect on that surreal encounter, I can't help but push it to the recesses of my mind, a place where the strange and inexplicable are relegated to gather dust. It felt too outlandish, too far-fetched to share with anyone. The fear of being labeled as peculiar loomed large, and I knew instinctively that such matters were best left unspoken. After all, I had no frame of reference for what had transpired. The concept of near-death experiences had yet to enter my sphere of awareness, rendering any attempt at explanation futile. But amidst the flurry of confusion, there lingered a persistent curiosity about the enigmatic being that had graced my presence. I yearned to unravel the mysteries shrouding his existence, to engage him in conversation, to gaze upon his form with unbridled fascination. When his presence first enveloped me, there was no sense of shock, only a profound sense of familiarity, as though his presence was a foregone conclusion. He exuded a gentle kindness that put me at ease, his presence akin to standing in the company of benevolent giant. Although my physical eyes failed to discern his form, my mind's eye painted a vivid picture of his stature and features, a testament to the inexplicable nature of our connection. It was as if I stood in a darkened room, with his presence looming just beyond the threshold of visibility, yet palpably close. I struggled to reconcile the sensation of his presence with the limitations of my physical senses, grappling with the paradox of perceiving beyond the confines of my corporeal form. Despite the surreal nature of the experience, there was an undeniable sense of authenticity that pervaded my consciousness. This was no dream, no figment of my imagination, but a tangible encounter with a reality beyond comprehension. I felt compelled to peer beyond the confines of my surroundings, drawn by an inexplicable urge to explore the unknown. Yet my attempts to penetrate the veil were thwarted by an inscrutable barrier, leaving me to accept the limitations of my newfound reality with resigned acquiescence. In the aftermath of that otherworldly encounter, a profound sense of peace washed over me, accompanied by an abiding sense of assurance. The presence of the being, my silent guardian, became a comforting presence in times of turmoil, a steadfast companion guiding me along life's winding path. His influence, though intangible, left an indelible mark on my psyche, instilling within me a sense of clarity and purpose. As I bring this narrative to a close, I am left with a profound sense of gratitude for the inexplicable bond forged in the crucible of uncertainty. Though the mysteries of that encounter may never fully unravel, its impact on my life remains undeniably profound, and so I embrace the enigma of the unknown with open arms, trusting in the wisdom of the unseen forces that shape our destinies.